life can be one for every Canadian family in the years to come. In its slogans, opponents feared the CCF seemed as radical as the Communist Party. Socialism, read a liberal ad, was the stepping stone to dictatorship. The agrarian has suffered, the manufacturer has suffered, the farmer has suffered. Conservative Prime Minister Richard Bennett lamented the Depression, but said the CCF went too far. Said Bennett, it was almost Soviet in its character. It is true that these were the kind of, kind of name calling that took place, the additional name that they were trying to attach to the CCF as communist. In condemning capitalist profits, Douglas said later, some of our people were pretty close to the communists. He told one CCFer, they didn't want to go all the way out to taking orders from the Soviet Union, but they were pretty far left. Doris Nielsen, the Saskatchewan CCFer, elected MP for North Battleford, was secretly a member of the Communist Party. She was kept under police surveillance. Years later, Nielsen left Canada to spend her final years in Maoist China. In Saskatchewan, Douglas first campaigned at age 29. The Depression, he said, swept away most preconceived notions of how things should run. Douglas, as a young man, had notions he would rarely speak of later. I don't think the average voter knew Tommy Douglas. They saw the image of Tommy Douglas that he wanted them to see. In 1934, in a CCF periodical, Douglas wrote of youth and the new day. The Weyburn clergyman proposed a program of eugenics, the sterilization of people deemed subnormal. The unsound, he wrote, should not be a burden to society. Douglas, in his 1933 master's thesis, wrote of the problems of the subnormal family including moral delinquents, he said, like single mothers. He favored segregation of the unfit. As an MP, first elected in 1935, Douglas quietly dropped his interest in eugenics. As Premier, he would never introduce it. Instead, in campaign pamphlets, Douglas pledged CCF stood for Children Come First. Saskatchewan would elect the first socialist government in the country. It happened through one extraordinary event. Afterward, as Premier, Douglas said, people must sense a need for change before it comes. They sensed it in Saskatchewan, but it took a war. I found, to my surprise, a tremendous amount of expectation when I came home. Now, I'd gone overseas in 42, I came back in 45. And I couldn't get over how, how keen politically people were compared with before. For many members of the Canadian Army, victory year means the end of soldiering and a return to city street. Many more will stay until the job is finished or until transport is available to carry them across the Atlantic. The repatriation schedule is operating in high gear. Loading by day and by night, by aircraft carrier, troop ship destroyer, or stately liner, Canadian service people are returning to their own shore. As they leave the momentous year 1945 behind them, all know the triumph they bought with their confidence will mean a leading place for Canada in the world of tomorrow. Wartime Gallup polls reported CCF gains. Once it was considered a fringe group. Now, 53% of voters wanted change. For someone to come along and say, yes, I, you've done the right thing, I agree with you, I can help, we can not only stave off disaster, but we can have a bright future. In 1944, after serving two terms in the House of Commons, Douglas returned to Saskatchewan and won the CCF leadership. There, a supporter said, he'd become a folk figure. And side by side we'll swell the pride. It would take us forever to go from, this is in Weyburn, 
uh, to go downtown to get the mail. And my mother used to say, now hurry up, you know, please, both of you, be back because we're going to have lunch. And we would go, but every 25 feet, somebody would stop him. And so we were quite late getting back. And I was like five or six. And my mother said, I don't know why it takes you so long to get down there and back. And I said, because we had to CCF all the way down and we had to CCF all the way back. June 15, 1944, Saskatchewan elected the first CCF government in the country. Tommy Douglas won 53% of the vote. It was the biggest Saskatchewan majority in a generation. I've been around politicians now for 50 years, and I like politicians. A lot of people don't like them. I like them, and it's partly because I was one, but I like them. And I never met one that I liked more and admired more than Tommy Douglas. The Premier was 39, an unaffected man of plain habits. Douglas told a reporter, you won't find me very interesting. I never do anything but work. His one indulgence was coffee with raisin pie. Troubled with ulcers, Douglas most of the time could stomach only boiled food and buttermilk. Smiling through banquets, he told a friend, was the politician's heaviest cross. Everybody wants to feed you, he said. The Douglas family lived in a $6,000 house with a $4,000 mortgage. On his night off, the Premier liked taking his wife Irma to the movies or playing records at home. I remember as a tiny child at the cottage, he had uh, old phonograph records of um, the quartet from Rigoletto and, and the sextet from uh, Lucia and he would play them for me and he would say, here comes Caruso. Douglas developed a showman's personality. He could clown for the cameras with Roy Rogers. Once visiting Hudson Bay, townspeople had Douglas ride in a dog cart. The Premier endured it with charm. He was so personable. People really wanted to shake his hand and touch him. Uh, it was, there was something uh, magical uh, uh, about him. He was good-humored. Welcoming a delegation from Russia, Douglas said, you'll find Saskatchewan is like Texas, but more friendly to the United States. When praised as a saintly figure by supporters, he would bring them back to earth with a self-deprecating joke. I felt something like the man on the resurrection morning who was reading his own tombstone and said, Either somebody's an awful liar, or I'm in the wrong hole. <laughs> Only weeks in office, in 1944, Douglas and his cabinet voted themselves a 29% pay cut. Then, they got to work. They raised pensions and created Saskatchewan's first Department of Labor. It was only the beginning. Making his first appearance in the legislature, the Premier and caucus introduced 71 bills in three weeks. The Saskatchewan Assembly had never seen such an order paper. One bill established a welfare department. Another raised the minimum wage. In one initiative, the CCF proposed to grant workers two weeks paid holiday every year. The first bill of its kind in Canada. Saskatchewan would become the first to enact a Bill of Rights and legislate the 44-hour work week. Farmers were promised electricity in most every homestead and village. It was a huge undertaking in a territory the size of France. Electricity actually changed the life of Saskatchewan. Tommy Douglas was elected on, on the promise that he would electrify Saskatchewan, and he did, very quickly. And it just made all the difference in the world how people lived. Another difference, promised the CCF, was plans for health. Saskatchewan introduced public hospital insurance. Basic care was provided for a $5 fee. 